Please take communications item 812. Request of Nicholas Caleb to address council regarding potential for city action on air quality regulation. Come on up. Good morning. So I actually am going to talk more about fossil fuel policy than air quality um, regulation today, so I'll switch a little bit. Um, so I'm Nick Caleb. I'm the staff attorney at Neighbors for Clean Air uh, the last four months. Um, and before I start talking about fossil fuel issues, I want to say thank you for the vote on the marijuana tax recently, um, especially Commissioner Novick for, for making that issue and Commissioner Saltzman for pushing that forward. Um, that was an important precedent for the city to make. I think the more investments we make in air quality, the, the easier it is for the state to follow suit and do solid regulation for us. Um, so regarding the fossil fuel infrastructure policy, um, city planners recently released the discussion draft for proposed bulk fossil fuel terminals in um, Portland, um, land use code. In my opinion, the initial uh, proposal runs afoul of what thousands of Portlanders believe they would get out of the resolution when they submitted comments, attended hearings, and ultimately celebrated council for its historic vote in November. As you'll recall, the resolution was a declaration that all fossil fuels are inherently dangerous throughout the entire life cycle from extraction to transport, storage, and combustion, and that citing new fossil fuel infrastructure in our city is wholly unreasonable because of the compounding risk of a major seismic event. We recently got a taste of how dangerous fossil fuel infrastructure is when an oil train derailed and caught fire in Mosier, Oregon. It's a miracle that no one was killed and that our Columbia River wasn't irreparably harmed. Um, this council showed wisdom and prescience in recognizing the dangers of fossil fuel infrastructure before we had to experience a disaster at home. Um, but as your resolution is being translated into code, we are quickly moving back to business as usual. A proposal that would not ban new fossil fuel terminals, nor would it halt the expansion of existing fossil fuel infrastructure. In addition, the discussion draft contains nothing that even begins to mitigate the risk to the public from existing fossil fuel infrastructure and the other tank farms in the Northwest Industrial Area. Instead, we're being asked to accept an increase in overall risk to the health uh, um, and safety of the public and an assumption that expansion of infrastructure will equal seismic upgrades for some facilities with absolutely no mechanism to guarantee it. Of course, there are no guarantees of 100% safety in this world, but we can be a city that doesn't compound the risks of the public by allowing a dying industry to dominate our politics and dictate public policy that puts our people and environment at unnecessary risk. After accident upon accident, it's beyond naive to take claims from fossil fuel companies or railroads at face value. After all, these are the same companies that knowingly engaged in disinformation campaigns around climate change for decades to protect short-term profits at the expense of the future. Many of these same multinationals were part of the city stakeholder process around this, um, this draft discussion that by my count included 30 representatives from the port and fossil fuel interests and only 10 representatives of community, environmental, and public health organizations. Unsurprisingly, um, the discussion draft uncritically accepts their assertions and protects their interests. Whether intended or not, um, caveats in the resolution that were interested, uh, introduced as last second amendments are being seized upon by city staff as a rationale to allow an increase in fossil fuel storage and transport in our city. Um, our new comprehensive plan encourages us to regulate fossil fuel infrastructure in line with regional demand, which must continually decrease if we are to meet our climate goals. It also contains general prescriptions to regulate industrial areas to protect public health and ensure seismic safety. Um, last paragraph here. There's still time to rescue the spirit of the fossil fuel infrastructure resolution and create policy that responds to the brute facts of cli climate and seismic danger while paving the way for 100% renewable energy powered Portland. Um, this is what we expect of council and we're eager to support your continued leadership in this. Thank you. Well, thanks, no, it's timely that you're here with this um, communication day because it is coming forward. And you're an experienced activist, but I just want to make sure everybody understands this. Um, when the planning staff or the planning sustainability commission produces a draft, it's just a draft. And so you've been here enough to know this, but often um, we will make significant changes in policies that are brought forward either by our volunteers on the commission or by our staff. So no one should feel that an early proposal is an indication that the council's on board with the draft. So yeah, absolutely. We understand that. Um, I think our, our goal here today was just to show that there's um, a significant amount of public interest still in this policy and that probably you can expect us to be involved every step of the way from here on yeah, out. Yeah, please do. Thank awesome. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, Nick, I would yeah. just like to um, make a pitch to climate activists to weigh in on land use type issues that affect um, our own use of fossil fuels. Like last week, we had a hearing on whether to adopt minimum parking regulations um, in Northwest requiring a certain amount of parking to be built with new buildings. And the affordable housing activists were out in force saying that these minimums would lead to increased housing prices. 
there were fewer the people from the environmental movement saying, wait a minute, we shouldn't be building more parking because that encourages people to drive and that helps to kill the planet. So these land use type issues come up fairly often and I really encourage uh, folks in, in the particularly active on climate issues to show up and be heard. Yeah, and I think many of our um, comrades in different movements subscribe to similar ideas and it's tough to be everywhere at once all the time, but I think a lot of the folks that were here for the, the, the parking issue, um, we supported them as well and, and pushed their messages around as well and we thanks for taking that up. Um, and just a, a second push with the, the sort of local climate action, which I totally agree on, um, and you've been vocal in the past about pointing out that, hey, if we're going to be doing this large-scale international stuff, then we should be doing stuff at home. I think there's starting to be a groundswell in Portland, and we've seen several um, mayoral and city council candidates start to talk about what 100% renewable Portland might look like, and we should begin to maybe open that discussion up about what our energy policy could be. And so we're looking for champions currently to carry that type of policy forward as well. So thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Okay, let's take the next person, please. 813, a request of Mia Reback to address the council regarding local climate action and fossil fuel policy. Good morning. Never know where this one is going to show up. Introducing presidential candidates, coming to city council <laughs> is just what she does. Yeah, and so <laughs> my name is Mia, and I'm the staff organizer with 350PDX. And we, along with many of our partners, have reviewed the discussion draft put out by BPS. And unfortunately, we believe that this draft falls short of the intent and the intended impact of the resolution passed in November. In the few minutes that I have here today, I want to touch on three main points regarding the policy. The first is that the community is expecting a full ban on new fossil fuel development and expansion, not limitations to growth and limitations to new terminals, but a full ban. Second, climate change is worse than we thought. We now have a new scientific understanding than we did in November about the magnitude of the crisis, the impacts we're facing, and the need for bolder action. And third, that we have everything that we need to begin an immediate transition to a 100% renewable economy, both globally and here at home, creating a massive amount of economic stimulus. I think that the opposition we saw to Pembina, the thousands of public comments, as well as the continued following of this issue through last fall, shows that the public is really engaged on climate. We have folks here today just coming out in the morning and people are really ready to see Portland take the lead on a strict ban and moving away from these bulk fossil fuel terminals. Um, despite the fact that the resolution is firmly rooted in our opposition to fossil fuels, the proposed discussion draft is actually allowing more fossil fuels. By defining bulk fossil fuels and then allowing them, we're not opposing them. And I think also it's important just to note that the amount of fossil fuels that we are allowing if the discussion draft were to move forward flies in the face of so many of our local policies. For example, the current proposal would allow new oil terminals up to 500,000 barrels per day. That would take about seven oil trains, mile-long crew trains coming through Portland to fill a terminal like that. In the wake of Mosier, we have a resolution against oil trains, as well as our local and state goals for carbon reduction. We can't be building new terminals of that magnitude let alone the risk that they provide to immediate health and safety, because there is not a requirement in this proposal for seismic resilience. There is an assumption in the current proposal that allowing companies to increase their terminal storage size will lead to a benevolent increase in seismic resilience. However, we're looking for council to take strong leadership on requiring these terminals to upgrade for the health and safety and not allow sacrifice zones in our community. By burning fossil fuels at any stage, we're turning the world into a sacrifice zone. In Paris, world leaders set a goal to cap global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius. We've likely locked ourselves into that amount of warming and really need an immediate transition away from fossil fuel use at every level around the world in order to cap global warming to a safe limit for humanity. It's already a life and death issue for many people around the world, and including in the US, where we had 23 people die from flooding already this spring, and that's something that we cannot allow 
Just to wrap up really quickly, I've submitted a report for you all today that was released last week by the Labor Network for Sustainability, and it shows that more jobs can be generated through investments in renewable energy and energy and efficiency than the same dollar investments in oil, coal, and natural gas infrastructure. And just to read a paragraph in the report as my cl closing words, this transition will not happen by itself. Because energy infrastructure is based on long-term investment and planning, it must be guided by economic strategies that are sustainable in the long term. The transition to worker and community-friendly clean energy will require deliberate decisions at every level of government. We, the community, hope to work with the council as well as staff at the Bureau of Planning and Sustainability to ensure that we do take that deliberate step to ban fossil fuels. Thanks, Thank Mia. you all. You know, uh, you mentioned the uh, Paris uh, Agreement, and I just got a report back that's kind of interesting to hear because I went along with 500 other mayors, Mayor Hidalgo invited us to be there to try to help put pressure on the process. And one of the um, sort of after action reports from that whole event was that actually the community voice that came through the 500 of us that were there was very influential. I mean, a lot of people put a lot of work into that uh, into that conference, but the fact that 500 local communities had done something and were standing up for something was quite emboldening to the negotiators, apparently. So, uh, that, you know, it was we were hoping that was the effect, but it turned out that it really was influential. So the fact that we're doing things at the community level is having an impact beyond Portland. So that makes it even more important. So thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here and supporting your colleagues.